welcome to our, our creative community. It's okay, so I think I did it. To have you all here tonight. Our topic for our demo tonight is photos and using your photos in your artwork. Um, that's something we all love to do, isn't it? Take photos and I got you guys, but I'll take a photo and I have a special album that I shove it into uh, of things that I want to paint, that I want to turn into paintings or drawings or I just love the side, I love the look of it, and someday I'm going to get to that and actually turn it into artwork. And, and I don't get around to it often. So I've got a technique that I want to talk about today and demonstrate for you that is a time saver. And I, I, my drawing teacher is probably going to be rolling her eyes and shaking her head at us because it just makes things easier, but it's not exactly the most traditional way uh, to create a drawing. You're going to see what I mean in a minute here. We're going to draw on top of our photos. We're going to attach them to a surface and then prime them so that we can draw on top of them. So to start out with, I'm going to have a surface here. This is our Blick Premier Artist panel. This is a smooth surface panel. So I like the fact that there's not going to be a texture that's interfering with anything. And this is the flat panel, but some of the examples that I have here are on a cradled panel, so they have a little bit of a depth to it, a little bit of a thickness. Um, you can use a candle if you'd like. You can use uh, another panel. Let's make sure, though, that you use something that has been primed and sealed because if you were to put this on a wood panel, chance that acid from the wood could come back through the photo and some discoloration later. And that could be very, we don't want that. So panel ready. And then I need to select a photo. This photo here, I want to give credit to Steve Davis of this co-photo for taking this photo. And I've selected someone who's very near and dear to me as my subject matter, as I know that a lot of you guys will be wanting to do portraits. Um, they make great gifts, of course, and a great way to just honor somebody and remember them. And we all love to do portraits, but portraits are they're hard to do, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, learning to be able to do a portrait well. Um, this, I hope, will help you in creating your portraits. It could be a landscape, it could be a pet, a home, what, whatever you like, whatever image you want to use. And it would be lovely if this portrait were to fit exactly on the panel. But we're limited. Uh, if you're like, you've got a home printer, an inkjet printer, or a laser printer, um, that's limited in size to either an 8.5 by 11 or, you know, 8.5 by 14. Um, but our panel sizes often come different sizes. So if it doesn't fit on, that's, that's probably a, a, a thing that you're going to have to deal with. So what I'd like to show is how, how you can deal with that, how you can make that work for you. You can use your regular bond paper that you always use within your inkjet printer. Um, I do suggest uh, using a photo paper, if at all possible, in a matte photo paper, of course, would work the best because you won't have to worry about the glossy coating over the top of it. Just wanted to show you that this was printed on an uh, ink press matte paper. Um, it will lie flat a little bit more. I won't have to worry about wrinkling. It does give me a little crisper image to work with. And also, it does make the ink that's coming off of the inkjet printer a little more water resistant. It's really meant for doing photographs and it, it'll work just a little bit better for you, but if you if you want to just play with this and try it for the first time, go ahead and use your regular bond paper. Okay, so now we have to get the photo onto the panel. Um, I'll talk you through the first way and then I'm going to show you an 
easy way because I am totally all about these time-saving ideas. All right, so you could take a Mod Podge or a pouring medium or a polymer gloss, a clear acrylic medium, and coat your surface and then coat the back side of your image and place it into the wet media and then allow it to dry. That's one way to do this. Um, if you are, are using your bond paper, you have to be very careful with rip it, you can tear it, and you might find some wrinkling with the wetness. However, a piece of double tack mounting film. Double tack is a double-sided adhesive sheet. So I'm just going to take and turn my over and peel apart to expose the adhesive on the double tack. It's a very strong adhesive. Let's see, I think I'll do it this way to tell you the truth because I might stick myself to the table if I don't. The edges here are still very sticky, so I need to cut those away. And while I'm at it, let's talk about edges in a photo. Because if we're going to use this to create artwork on top of it, we don't want these harsh corners, these harsh edges. Um, that's just kind of going to really draw your attention to it and take away from the rest of the photo. So what you want to do is try to make your edges as rounded and as soft as possible. So I'm going to just cut this out real fast here around, let's see, I'm going to make, I don't need to have exposed adhesive, so I will go around this area. I'm going to cut my background out. No need to have the background. I'm going to give that a little bit of a curve following the line there. And I certainly don't need to cut around every little hair follicle, but I want to get rid of that corner. So I'm going to come up here actually and just kind of follow this the shadow like so come up around her hat now to me that forearm is not necessary because uh, the photo just uh, blew it out there and it's just a white area anyway so I'm just going to cut that forearm off and I can always draw that in with my image. Cut the adhesive away like so. Okay, now this is the beauty of double tack is now I don't have to wait for it to dry. Now it's just a matter of peeling off the second backing paper and exposing the rest of the adhesive nice when it all comes off in one sheet, but you had to rip and I just turned it around. All right, now I do have a couple edges to deal with, so I'm going to just place those at the edge of the paper. I could move them in a little bit if I wanted to, but that'll just give me a way to line it up and push it down. And there we have our image place. 
I can work from the middle, pushing out, and in here, here those air bubbles, those are being moved out. All right, so I should mention at this point that this image has sprayed with a fixative. Um, because the paper is a little bit more uh, absorbent, the inks are going to stay on the paper a little bit better. However, it is always a good idea to seal it to make sure that those inks stay in place. Uh, inkjet printers tend to be water-soluble inks, and so if we start applying anything that's wet over the top of it, um, it's going to go go ahead and it's going to out and and you're going to you're going to regret that. So, I used this this is just one of many many, many different fixatives. I a new one that we had. Um, a universal fixative. It has a little, little bit of a, a UV protectant in as as, as well. Um, I just gave it a couple of coats over it and allowed it to dry and that should be sealed pretty well. I do tend to save my mistakes, and I don't really want to save a mistake because it's still fine. But let's look at this. You can see I didn't seal it very well. I missed some spots here. And so when I started to put on uh, a wet medium, it pulled, it pulled the inks off it there, and I started to get some spottiness in it. It started and uh, move into the white is, this is still good. I would still use this. I would be able to draw right on top of it. However, I just want to show it to you and because I'm demonstrating, I made a second one. All right, so because there's a little bit of thickness to the photo paper, add fit uh, thickness with full tack. Uh, I want to sand these edge photo down so that they're smoother and don't stand out from the surface as much. This is especially important if you're going to have uh, a flat area like the edge of that hat. Then I'm going to try and extend with my drawing media. But I've just got a little piece of a fine grit sandpaper and I am going along the edge very edges. It's going to take a little of that photo off. I will tell you that. I'm going to see and that's okay. You're going to see a little bit of white perhaps on the end or lightening. All right and I would go around the entire entire photo and sand all the edges. But let me just proceed with the demo so that we don't spend time doing that. All right, now let's talk about the priming part of it, what we're going to put over it. Um, in the old days, back before we had color photography, uh, they used to hand color black and white photos. You've seen that look, that vintage look of just taking a little bit of oil color and touching in some eye color, touch of a skin tone and the lips, and it's, it's a beautiful look. Um, you can achieve a little bit of that look by coloring on top of that with colored pencils, but today I'm going to show you how to actually put a surface on top of the photo that makes it much easier to do artwork on top of a photo. Uh, one of the things you can use is a a couple of them here. We have the golden pastel ground, and we also have the Art Spectrum Color Fix. Both of these are a clear ground, so when they dry, when they come out of the jar, they look white, but they will dry completely clear once they're dry. Between the two mediums, they're very similar, but um, um, what I've tested is I found that the gold is a little bit more of a texture. Uh, the particles that are in the medium are sand-like particles, but they're a little coarser. And so if we look at, at the version of this portrait, you can see a lot of sketches. There's, there's a lot of texture that makes it look very, very much, it's, it's all uh, a hand drawing, which I like. But if you wanted a little smoother, 
um, I found that the art spectrum has a little bit finer ground. And so I used that just to make a second one. You never make the same painting twice in the same way. So there's a lot of variances between the two. But what I wanted to get across was uh, the texture of it. So I'm going to just use the art spectrum here. Um, get a little bit out from the jar. See, it is white, and that's a little disconcerting to put right on top of your photo first thing. You could use a paint roller to apply this. I've just got a nice wide foam brush here. And I'm going to spread it across. You can see there's still picking up just a little bit of ink, even though I have sealed it. It would be a lot more if I hadn't sealed it. But it, you can tell when it moves into the white area here that I am picking up a little bit of the inkjet from a spot too that is not sealed. Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth across. And you can also make a uh, texture by making X's like this. It gives you less of a, a consistent texture, but I kind of like that. All right, I would let this dry, and then I would come back and I would do a second coat. With my second coat, I am going. I would concentrate more of the outside of the image here. First of all, even though it's a clear medium, it does have a little bit of an opacity. So the more medium you put on, um, the less transparent it's going to be. And I want to be able to see all of the details clearly in the face. So for this coat, I would concentrate perhaps on the edges and also getting it up against where the edge of the photo is, like so. All right, dry time is really pretty fast on that. I, I would probably set this uh, in front of a fan and it'd be ready in about 10, 15 minutes. So it doesn't take long, especially when doing a, a light coat like I just did, but because we're demonstrating and I don't want to make you guys hang around for 10, 15 minutes watching paint dry, I did make one that uh, is already dry and ready to go. All right, let me just rub my finger across that. I want you guys to be able to hear the texture since you're really not going to be able to see the texture. You can hear it when I rub my hands across it. It has a grit to it. It's a sanded type surface. And I know somebody's going to ask, could I just put pouring medium or another medium atop it? And quite frankly, no. Um, when you sand over the top of a medium like that, you will actually create kind of a, an opaque area and you'll be able to see where you sanded it. And also you just, this actually has particles. So there are raised particles that are causing that and not sanded away particles. So this really does have quite a bit of uh, texture to it. All right, now I'm going to draw right on top of that photo. And I'm going to start out, first of all, start out in the detail areas. Um, that's the easiest and that's the most important, especially when we're talking about a photo uh, and a portrait. Um, we want that, those facial features to really stand out. So I'm going to start in with the eyes. To me, that's just the most important thing. And, you know, the expression on these eyes. I see a highlight in there. I'm going to call that out with a white colored pencil. And let me talk a little bit about the pencils that I'm going to be using today. These are our Blick Studio Artist Colored Pencils. Um, I'm going to be using the portrait set, but I just want to call attention over here on the side to the full set of 72 over here. I mean, that would be overkill for what I'm doing here, but wouldn't it be lovely to own a set of colored pencils like that with all of those different colors? 
and we uh, colorless blender that comes with these. These are professional quality color pencils. We have a number of professional artists that love our Blick Studio colored pencils. Um, they're highly pigmented. They are uh, light, res light resistant, fade resistant, very blendable. Um, because uh, of the way they are made, um, to have a fully, to have them as light fast as, as paint per se is, is, is literally, it's good to do. So these are fade resistant in your pencil. You can always, always do a UV coat over it to make sure that there's no fading that takes place. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end, but just wanted to point out our book studio color pencils there particularly, in particular, this is our portrait set. So we have a number of pencils that fall within the tone ranges, but I will say this, you will never be able to find the exact color. If I look at this area, the skin tone area, um, I can find something similar, but not exactly right. So usually I have to mix. And I know some of you are saying, what? what? You don't mix color pencils, do you? Well, actually, it's a form of mixing. It's an optical mixing. It's, it's making a color that matches that color simply by layering colors together. So I had one that was a little dim, so I noticed that it's a little bit more yellow, but not quite that yellow. So a little bit of orange over the top of it. Now you could also do this, you know, off on another sheet to kind of test your colors first. Um, one thing that I always wondered about is in a set like this, why do you have purples and blues, greens um, for, for eye color? Yes, absolutely. But here's another reason. Okay, so when I get over here into the shadows and I start to do a darker color of brown, I realize that color isn't just exactly right. I know you guys are on a, uh, a low resolution probably. You're not able to see that on the video here. Um, but it is. It's, it's a very orangish color of brown. And that's not going to look right. But if we think about our color wheel and we think about what color is the complementary, the opposite of that color, uh, the opposite color of an orange would be a blue. So if I came back in and added just very, very lightly a little bit of blue on top of the orange, it's going to neutralize it a little bit and take that color down into more of a brown. Okay, and the same thing would happen. Okay, let's see. Let's try another brown here that, uh, let's see, this one right here. This one, well, it looks a little greenish on here. But it's not exactly the right color. So in that case, I might take, uh, I'm going to go the lighter one, a little bit of a violet violet or purplish color and go over the top of it lightly. It neutralizes it. Okay. Now some of the you want to think about what is it that drew you most to this to this portrait, to this image. And Obviously, the, the pretty little eyes there and the sweet expression, but I also loved the way that the sun threw the sun hat and created these highlights on her face. So before I do anything else, I want to create those highlights with a light colored pencil. Make sure that they're there. So I go over the top of them like so. And then, of course, there's some down here. And as I get into the shadowy area, 
get a little bit a little bit darker so I might move to the next color here so those are the things that I hit first are the things that really stand out to me as the most important things in the photo now you don't need to cover every little area of the face with color pencil or with, with a medium. Um, basically, if we just lightly go across, it starts to pick up the texture, the texture that I left with medium when I put on with the brush. Again, I apologize because I know this is a little bit more low resolution. Can't exactly see. You'll yell in a minute when I get to some broader medium. But the idea is that I'm adding a little bit of texture there. And I'm leaving a little bit. Now, as I get into broader areas, um, then I want to maybe use a broader medium. You can use any medium, any drawing medium on this. I started with colored pencils, but I could start with pastel pencils. I could use oil pastels. Whatever medium you are currently using and that you're comfortable with, you've got a good surface to work with here. Um, this is for dry media, I, I should point that out. Um, there are other, other versions of what I put on top of here, um, the clear fix. There are other versions for watercolor and for using wet media as well, but this surface this is for any dry media that you have. So I'm going to switch from colored pencils now over to some pastels. And these are the Prismacolor Premier Pastels, the uh, new pastels. So they're a harder pastel, not a soft pastel. And the reason I like using these is because of their square shape. You can use them on the broad side to create a kind of a broad color area. You could break them in half and use smaller pieces of that, but you can also use the edge and start creating some in-between, not plain lines, but some in-between lines. The set I'm using is a 36 color set. Do you see how I'm using that in a broader sense, a sketchier sense? Uh, perhaps then my color. I keep the focus on this area here as I move out into the broader areas of the portrait. Then I'm going to get a little sketchier with it. You can still have some of that photo showing through. I don't need to cover every little bit of it, as I've mentioned. Build out some of the darker areas here. Okay. Now let's go to, uh, well, first of all, I want to talk about some areas. Because I know, especially as you get out here into these areas, you probably want to do, a, in our first, our first idea with drawing mediums are is to take our fingers and start doing this, right? right? Getting your fingers in it. Let me tell you that that's not exactly a great idea. Um, your skin's porous, so any time that you start rubbing uh, like this, you're forcing those pigments to go into your skin. And even though they might be non-toxic, innocuous pigments, it's just not never a good idea to put unnatural things into our body. So, you could use a finger cut, which are little little uh, glove fingers that just go over your fingers like so. Um, today, I have the invisible glove, and before we got started, I covered my my hands uh, this lotion, and made it made sure that I worked it into the nails and into my skin all over. And what I have now is I have a barrier coat over my entire hands. And it'll make it easier to wash off 
but it'll also keep the pigments from getting into my skin. And it's, to me, it's just a little, little easier and sort of more comfortable uh, to use an invisible glove than an actual glove. But uh, use what you have on hand. You could use a, a latex glove. You could use uh, a blending stump. You can get your fingers out of it, and you could use something like a blending stump, like I just used here, to kind of substitute as your finger to blend things together, like so. All right, I'm just going to work a little bit more. Um, I had mentioned using and I noticed that around there is a little bit orangish to me. So I grabbed a little bit of a purple and or a little yellowish, I should say, and worked that into the shadows. Now, this may seem like kind of a, a cheating way to actually do a drawing because, you know, you're tracing. That's the reason I said my drawing teacher is rolling her eyes now at me. But why not, you know? Why, why not make it, the more quickly we can make art, the more art we can make. And also, I am learning as I'm doing this, as I'm looking at the skin tones and the hair tones and uh, the, the colors that are going on underneath here, I'm learning. Um, I start to see how the shadows of the face are formed. I start to see colors that I, I'm not expecting, you know. I can see that this is a dark color back here, but um, there's actually blues that are reflecting up here from her shirt. And I can see in the eye area where, where the shadows occur. Um, I can see that the, the whites of her eyes here are not actually white. In fact, they're kind of gray. Um, so I could either find a gray pastel or a pencil, or I could take and then tone it down with another color. Because assuming, if we're assuming, we think that the light is bright white, but it's really not. And I only know that from looking very closely at the photo. So I toned it down with just a little bit of a brown, that yellowish brown, like so. Okay, now I want to get into some of these areas um, where the drawing stops. And we want to continue it onto the surface, like so. Um, if I use a colored pencil to do that, I can extend it, kind of define where I want it to continue off. But that's going to take me a while, because that's, that's a small surface to get the color off of. So I'm probably going to move directly to a broader medium, such as a pastel or an oil pastel. And I want to make sure I just go across the edge like this. You notice there's a skip. And that's because it's gone off the edge and it's now stopping. So I want to make sure that I get the color tucked all the way around there, like so, and over the top of it. And then, resisting the temptation to stick my finger in there. I can take this and just kind of bring it up with the blending stump. A bit more. And this is actually where I like to in the background area, I like to use the broadest medium. I've gone from colored pencil to pastel, and now I'm going to go to pan pastel because I can use the pan pastel tools to get a lot of color on there at once. And if I dab it a little bit like this, see how it kind of blends in, makes it a little softer. In a photograph, of course, your focus is here, and then as you move back away from it, it softens up. 
So when I get into background areas, I would do this with the hat, uh, with this area back up here. So let's say in the original photo, it was a little bit green up here. So I'm filling this area roughly to start out with, with some green. And let's use a different area, that blending stump. To make sure that I've got the entire background. And pastel is a little bit powdery, so I think I'll just tap off some of the powder there so I can see more what I'm doing. And now I'm going to use some of my pan pastel and then dab them over the top like so to create uh, the photographers call that dappled effect when you've got kind of a blurry area back there. They call that bokeh. So I'm creating bokeh. Just by dabbing my pan pastels over the top. You could, you could create this as well with a, uh, maybe a soft pastel or a stick pastel. And I would want to extend the hair off to the side here. Um, start by kind of guessing, going back to the reference photo. Unfortunately, that was cropped off, which made for a good photograph, but it doesn't fit my surface. So I'm going to start with kind of a base color, of the yellowish color of that hat. Fill that area. Got a little green on that tool, but that's okay because now I'm going to come back over with uh, some of the other colors that are in that portrait, some of the browns. To create that, that texture on the hat again. It's really moving away from a photograph and really becoming a drawing. And that's my goal, is to have it look more like a drawing. All right, so I would keep working on this, um, you know, finishing off these, these few little areas in here um, to finish up the picture. And then once I have it to the point where I like it, I would need to seal it, yes, because it is drawing mediums. It's colored pencil, it's pastel, it's mediums that could smear or uh, get damaged. And so I would recommend sealing it. I'm going to back and use the exact same sealant that I used to seal the pho photograph at the very beginning, the HC10. There's other sealants. You notice a little bit of color shift with this one. The green might get a little bit darker simply because it's dry medium and then as you wet it to get the fixative on top of it, it kind of, it kind of mats down into the uh, surface. Um, but when you seal it, just do a light coat at a time. Um, back and forth horizontally, back and forth vertically. Do not make the mistake that I've made before where I just saturate an area because I want to get it done fast. Mm, that's the worst thing you can do. I like the spray because they also give you a second spray option. So there's the traditional spray of a spray can, but they also have a flat one um, that sprays more in a line. And I think that works perfectly for drawings such as this. So lightly spray it both directions, then come back in about 10 minutes, give it a second coat. This is something you want to do outdoors. Uh, not a good, it's an aerosol and it's flammable and um, it does have fumes, of course. But come back in about 10 minutes, give it a second coat, even a third coat if you want to. But do it lightly in layers instead of trying to seal it all at once. 
Um, just looking at some of my examples, you can see that it's real easy to go to a larger surface and off the photo. And we'll take a look here at this, this little doggy photo over here. Uh, cute little Miko is her name. And uh, the colors were totally shifted from the photograph. The photograph was pretty neutral. She's kind of a, a neutral color, dark, dark haired dog. Um, but I happen to really love the color pink on her. She always has a pink collar on, on and everything. So I altered the colors and just kind of went with colors that I preferred uh, than to what the color there. All right. Right. Well, I think that's enough for this demo and how you guys started. And I certainly hope that you will enjoy make, turning your photos into drawings and paintings like this. And that you enjoyed this demo and have fun with your photos. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to take off and get this fixed and before I destroy anything else. Thanks for joining me tonight. We'll see you next time.